Father Camino Javines, Director of Basic Education, Ms. Kermit Vita Dada, Principal of the USC North Campus, um, Reverend Father Agape Chaplin of the University of Central Arizona North Campus, uh, distinguished faculty, uh, officers of the school, uh, dear parents, and graduates. Good evening. Pleasant and good evening to everyone. I am honored to have the privilege of addressing you in this very important milestone in your life. Uh, this place holds many memories for me. As I was contemplating on what to tell you in this momentous occasion of yours, I thought that perhaps the best way for me to do this was to share memories with you and how those memories brought me to where I am today. I would like to share three memories with you. Two of these are from my days in USC, BHS. Yes, we used to call this school USC BHS, which, which stands for University of San Carlos Boys High School. I see now that the school has evolved to become a co-ed school to welcome development now it's called the USC North Campus, and I believe it offers well for the emotional development of our young adults to grow up with peers from both genders as the peers like in general. I remember that the song High School Life was played after our graduation ceremonies in 1983. It was a hit song then, at the time by Sharon Conetta. It was one of those songs where you develop some kind of awkwardness at meeting that you used to sing it and at the same time you have a genuine sense of enjoyment when you actually see it. Now, isn't it true that you can actually remember the milestones in your life through songs? I wasn't a particularly good singer, but I, but I could carry it too. I love music. In fact, that is one of my fondest memories in high school. The first memory I'd like to share with you. So my first memory is that of music. I could play guitar and piano and hang out with friends who, like me, loved music. I had friends who were really good singers. We were part of a choir that sang for the Sunday Mass at the Redemptorist Church because I could bring my friends to sing together and to some extent arrange song and voices. I had taken on de facto leadership roles for our group and my classmates especially when we had to prepare for performances involving the whole class. In fact, I was so driven by music that in my senior year in high school, I organized a club together with and guided by my mentor, Miss Data, who which we called the Performing Arts Club. The club was composed of three groups. This was the, there was a dramatics club, the dance club, and the choral club. There was an executive committee composed of the officers from the three groups. We actually hired professional help for each of the clubs to do weekly trainings, and we also held workshops. The highlight of our efforts was the production of a play we called The Black Pearl. This is perhaps the most important experience in my life high school life. We had our struggles, but there was an upside because the play allowed us to interact with equivalent clubs of our sister school the USC Girls High School. We developed good friendships with our counterparts. The play was successful. It was a defining experience for me and equally with the members of the club on leadership. Leadership that does, does not have to mean that you have to be first among others. At least from what I do recall, each one had to perform his or her part and meet the demanding hours of rehearsals, participate in fundraising activities, sell tickets and at the same time, pass exams, submit school requirements on time, among others. We still have to make sure that we have to graduate by the end of the school year, but we love what we were doing. It was something that we were proud to achieve for ourselves, that we can show to our parents, friends and teachers. Looking back, and certainly it did not seem that way, Leadership then was being able to take on and get through tough challenges in doing what we each love. As you pursue college, 
I hope you remember that living oneself through your challenges is the most important principle of leadership. It is easier to do this if you love what you do because there's an internal GPS that guides you. Uh, there's a song called The Greatest Love of All, which was popularized by Ruby Houston in 1985. There's a line that says, learning to love yourself is the greatest love of all. If I may, you can replace it to learning to lead yourself is the greatest leadership of all. My second memory of my days in USC teachers is that of friendship. In my school, you talk with your friends all the time in school and all the time after school. In 1983, for after school, we had landlines. Yes, landlines. No? You even had a party line. Um, if you don't know what a party line is, it's, it's a household sharing the same line with you. So imagine that you like to talk to your friends or classmates over the phone, but you couldn't do so because the party line was using the phone. That was the drama then. No cell phones, no texting, no Facebook, no Twitter, no Instagram. What did we talk about? Anything and everything. We talked about life in general, visions, pursuits, hobbies, opinions, news from persons of interest, or more accurately for us, girls of interest. Uh, the world has changed. Today, technology has reshaped the world the way we interact with friends. You text, you call each other's cell phone, you post pictures, you update your status, you Skype, getting together can meet several of your friends on video or audio conferencing over the internet. Today, friend is a verb. If somehow you like reading and you've read William Shakespeare's play Hamlet, there is a scene that opens with the phrase to be or not to be by Prince Hamlet when he realizes that life is unfair. Today, the dilemmas could be to friend or not to friend, to tweet or not to tweet, to post or not to post, and you can literally count your friends by the hundreds or even thousands. Technology has been changed the way we interact with friends and people in general. Some of you will say that technology has redefined friendship. Perhaps technology does or does not. Anyhow, the important thing to remember is that genuine friendship is not about numbers, but the quality of your relationship. Can you count on your friends in need? Can you celebrate with them your triumphs and experience your consoling presence and failures, and vice versa? And there is so much more. My answer to these questions is yes. And my high school friends are still my friends today. Aside from family, and certainly you will make new friends in college. Your friends in high school form a reliable system of support as you go through the ups and downs in pursuing your dream. So please take a good look around. My third and final memory that I'd like to share with you is beyond my years in USC BHS. I have many interests and I was quite driven by all these interests. Each of these interests require time and attention. I also like adventure. At that time, there was no greater adventure than, adventure than to be on my own to pursue college in Metro Manila, as I had what is now called a DOSC scholarship in the University of the Philippines to study computer science. It was, and still is, for me, the greatest adventure, independence. It wasn't just computer science that preoccupied my energies and attention, I spent more time with my interests in music, sports, organizations, and others that soon affected my ability to perform in class. I lost my scholarship, and it was the most humbling experience of my life, not to mention the financial difficulty that my family had to bear to continue supporting my studies in Metro Manila. I did not accept that and it was my own doing, and blame just about anything or anyone other than myself because I was accused to fail. At the brink of being expelled from the university, one of my professors told me that I should be clear with my priorities or forget about finishing college. Out of necessity, 
I did manage to realign my priorities and finish my degree in computer science. After that, I got a scholarship from IBM for a four-month IT professional development program, which I completed. I also actually enrolled in the UP College of Music to pursue a music degree I was, as I was already done with computer science. While formally studying music, I realized that while I enjoyed myself with new friends in the college, I was struggling to make my rent and feed myself for my work as research assistant at the National Engineering Center in UP. My new friends in music also told me that a musician's life is that of passion for the field, which may or may not lead to my grand vision of a successful life of financial independence. In 1989, when I got a call to work for a special project for the Office of the President in Malacanang through IBM's representation, I made the decision to throw away all my music materials. When I say throw away, all my materials that I made, including my compositions, my musical arrangements, and all my music pieces, I just felt the need to focus on my computer science career. By the way, the music, music, uh, music played a big part when I met my wife, Gina, who said she was impressed with my piano playing skills, so that earned me a lot of coding points for her then. And after completing my commitment of two years working for the government, I joined a multinational company where I stayed for a rewarding 11 years. The company I worked for, Smith Bichan, granted me a scholarship for my master's course in business administration. It also allowed me to travel and see the world. I got married when I was working there. Gina and I have three wonderful children. I met some friends in my corporate love life who are now my business partners in the two companies I have for, Tech Factors Incorporated, a company that advocates and develops technology competencies for students as a source of global competitive advantage. We also form and start business solutions which focuses on schools and institutions to help them with their customer life cycles. Today, Tech Factors has partnerships with over 350 private schools nationwide with a combined subscription base of over 250,000 students annually and continues to grow steadily as we introduce more technology-based assistive curriculum. Over the years, we have touched the lives of over a million students. The University of San Carlos Basic Education has been a second partner of Tech Factors from our early days in the advocacy. As the Philippines shifts into the K-12 system, you graduates are in a very good position. First of all, you have benefited from a Carolinian education with, which has formed what we call a Carolinian spirit of service. Also, your institution is dedicated to developing it to become globally competitive. And we have had the privilege in Tech Factors to work with you in your ICT courseware, your information and communication technology courseware, which helps develop 21st century skills. This, there are four areas, such as your ways of thinking, your ways of working, tools for working like ICT, and skills for life, such as personal and social responsibility. Today, I enjoy music as a hobby. Would I have been as successful, as successful pursuing music instead of computer science? Perhaps eventually I would. We have so many role models of success in music, but that is not the choice I made. You will make your own life choices. Sometimes they're easy, sometimes they're not, and it can be between two things you love. But whatever your choice, Give it all you've got. Stay focused. Choosing halfway is choosing failure. Those are my three memories. Music, friendship, and choice. I know you will make your own memories. It is my hope that by sharing mine, you get to pick up a tip or two as you create your own. I wish you all the best in pursuing your dreams. Congratulations and God bless you always.